Hi, I'm Dr. Rafi Israel, and I'm here to talk about the proper use of palm scan easy immersion tip. The easy immersion tip is a new tip that was created to be able to do immersion biometry easy and accurately and without mess of tubing or extra fluid running down the patient's face. The supplies that are needed to do the easy immersion is um, obviously the easy immersion tip, the transducer, and the palm scan system. I like to use a BSS and some alcohol pad and a few uh, sterile gauze. Now I would like to go step by step and talk about exactly how I usually uh, use the easy immersion tip with great success. The first thing you want to do is connect the transducer to the machine and make sure that the palm scan turns on. The transducer tip should be wiped up with an alcohol swab, even though it really doesn't come in contact with patients, but the ice will wipe it and then dry it. And now I'm ready to place the easy immersion tip on the transducer. And to do that, I just peel the side of the package and insert my transducer inside the package being careful not to touch the tip. And for now, I just leave the transducer and the tip inside the box, and I install the tetracaine drop on the patient's, in the patient's eye. Now we're ready to start the examination. So first, what I'd like to do is fill the easy immersion tip with BSS, and to do that, I just tilt the easy immersion tip and place just enough fluid to fill the chamber and a little meniscus of water on top. Now I'm ready to start the scan by going into the scan mode. And make sure that make sure that immersion biometry is selected. And as you can see there is a blinking red light. At this point, I will instruct the patient to cover the fellow eye. Please cover your eye. And I instruct her to look at the blinking light. And I gently just come forward until there is a connection between the meniscus and the machine, as you heard, will do the scanning. Now that we have successfully measured the scan the right eye, we're going to scan the left eye. And again, as you can see, only very small amount of the meniscus on top was transferred to the eye. And I will put half a drop more to form the meniscus again. And I like to zoom in right on top of the meniscus if it's possible so you can see this is the perfect amount of meniscus. And at this point, I'm going to do the left eye. So the main thing to remember is if the machine is not capturing when you touch the eye, don't press on the eye. Just hold it stable and ask the patient to look at the blinking light. Please look at the blinking light. So first I move the... Look at the blinking light. So first I move it a little bit to make sure that the patient is fixating properly and then just bring it close enough and then you're done. And basically that's all it takes to do a successful uh, immersion biometry without any mess on the patient. Now that we have successfully scanned the right eye, we're going to scan the left eye. And to do that I will reintroduce half of the drop that was lost to the right eye back into the meniscus on top of the easy immersion. And at this point, you're ready to scan, so you press the scan button. Make sure you're in immersion. Look at the blinking light. Look at the blinking light. And just gently come forward until the meniscus is touching the eye and instruct the patient to look at the blinking light. 
and you're done. Now I would like to talk about some of the reasons that my colleagues uh, uh, might have difficulty in capturing with an easy immersion tip. The number one reason, in my opinion, is not having the right alignment. So the, what most of the techs I've seen do, if they're not aligned properly in the eye, they tend to press hard on the eye. So what I would like to uh, re-emphasize is that with this technique, you don't want to press on the eye, you just want the meniscus to touch the cornea, and at that point you want to instruct the patient to look directly at the blinking light and then hold the uh, probe in position until the capture starts. If the capture doesn't start, then the problem could be because of not reaching the thresholds on the uh, echograms, which I will shortly talk about that. The other problem that I've seen some techs have is uh, the way that they feel the water and the way they touch the cornea. So if you feel the chamber of the easy immersion tip properly, uh, you should only have just about the meniscus of water be transferred to the patient. Now a lot of time I've seen uh, some uh, offices not use BSS and they use eye wash or other uh, material that have soap in it. And if you do that, do that, then the surface tension is decreased and the water sips out a lot easier. So what you want to make sure is you want to make sure that you use a proper solution so the, pro uh, the surface tension will hold the meniscus. Next, you want to make sure that when you approach the cornea, you approach it straight on. The patient does not have to be tilted back in this uh, particular uh, scanning apparatus, uh, but what you don't want to do is you don't, you don't want to press too hard on the eye or you don't want to approach an angle that causes the meniscus to be drained completely. So if you, if you touch the eye like so, the, in an oblique angle instead of perpendicular angle, the, you make an avenue for the water to sit out instead of stay inside the uh, container. So just approach the eye straight and once the tip touches the eye, do not force into the eye, just hold it on the eye and instruct the patient to look at the blinking light. The other thing I do to make sure that the patient is fixating properly, if you noticed earlier, I ask the patient to look at, look at the blinking light and I move the probe back and forth and make sure that the patient is following the probe properly. That way I know that they're looking directly at the uh, blinking light as I approach the cornea. And your approach should be very gentle, uh, just so that meniscus and the eye couple together and you should have very good uh, immersion captures with high accuracy. The machine will reach threshold for capture when the specific stru structures of the eye are above the threshold line. Specifically, the machine is looking for the corneal peaks, the anterior um, lens peak, the posterior lens peak, and the perpendicular retinal peak. Now, if the patient is not directly looking at the probes, so if the patient's retina is not perpendicular aligned with the probe, the number one peak that would be de uh, reduced or attenuated would be the posterior lens uh, spike. So if you place the, uh, the palm scan on the eye and it's not capturing uh, after one or two seconds, we recommend that you look at the echograms and make sure that the posterior lens spike is above threshold. And to do that, you might just have to uh, realign your transducer in relationship to the uh, patient by, by instructing them to look directly at the uh, blinking LED and also make sure that you're, you're holding the transducer perpendicular to the eye uh, and not at the angle that prohibits the eye to be perpendicular to the transducer. I'd like to re-emphasize the proper amount of uh, meniscus on the easy immersion tip. And as you can see, the proper amount is just enough to have about a millimeter or a millimeter and a half dome. You don't want to overflow the dome because when you hold it in a horizontal position, then uh, if you have a dome that is too big, you will have the dome uh, 
cause a prismatic effect on the LED light and the patient might not be looking directly at the LED. So as I said, this is just about the perfect amount of dome and just bear in mind that when you do this exam, if you do it right, you only transfer this amount of fluid to the eye and you keep the rest of it in the chamber. And all you have to do is uh, introduce half the amount of drop back on the dome to do the other eye. This is how fast you can do immersion biometry using the easy immersion tip. Please look at the light. 